Okay, so again, same exact procedure, two inch stop, okay? Gonna be some differences on the Femco. This is very much like any of your Fana clays, Yaznak clays would be very similar how you set up. The nice thing about this setup procedure that I'm doing, it's almost the same here as it is on an Akuma, as it is on a Mazak, as it is on a Haas. The manual setup method is about the same on every CNC leg. Okay. All right, so first of all, we want to turn the spindle on. Now, let's, let's, let's back up a little bit. So here's our offset table on the Fana control. Okay, we have our wear offsets, which you guys were changing last week. If you go ahead and press geometry, here's all your geometry numbers. Okay, so there is no easy way to zap them all at one time on this control. Okay, if I wanted to kill them, I would say like X0 input, Z0 input. X0 input, Z0 input. They, they clear out pretty quick as you can tell. Now I'm clearing out tools that hopefully the advanced guys don't get too angry at me, but I need to learn how to set these up anyway, right? X0 input, Z0 input. So here's tool 9, X0 input, Z0 input. 12, we're not using 12, I'm not going to mess with it. We're not using 15, we're using 21, 22, 23. These are the old numbers that are there. So we zap down all the offsets we're going to be using for ourselves. We could have overwrote the existing ones if we were doing it, that would have been fine. Next track sequence when you go to the setting. Alright, on the FINA control, you also do not manually turn the spindle on using MDI. You simply turn it on by just normal key. Now here's the problem with this button, okay? I'm going to show you the hazards of it. If someone has this all the way up to here, and you press that button, this chuck is turning on at 4,800 RPM. Okay? Which is beyond the gripping force of that chuck jaw. After all chucks, we're limited out at about 3,600. And this is going to be like most of your fan of controls. So when you're manually turn them on, make sure the spindle speed goes all the way down to zero first. Turn it on, and then slowly adjust it up. And it will tell you right here where the RPM is. Speed is 303. We're going to go about five or six hundred, so I'm going to crank it up a little more. That's that's good right there. Five or six hundred is fine. I'll go down a little bit. Okay? Very important you do that because you don't want to turn that on going too fast. Okay? All right, so now we're going to shift ourselves over to the handle mode and we're going to come up a little closer to the part. I home the machine. Holding the machine is crucial. If you don't home the machine, you're gonna get bad numbers, okay? The machine was homed. If you weren't sure about homing it, make sure you just home it. There, now we're 100% sure we homed it, okay? So, I'm gonna go here to handle. I'm gonna feed up, close the part. I'm gonna index my turret. So I have tool number one up. Okay, this is tool number one. And a lot of this is the same exact thing I did of the Haas. I'm going to slow the handle down and come up just until I get a chip on the face of the part. This is the rough tool. So this tool is going to take the 30,000 take the stock off and make up for the differences in the stock or a stock cut. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the x-axis, I'm going to feed up a little, I'm going to put it on Z, put it on X100, which is 30 thousandths per individual little click per pulse, so I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, slow it down, put it on X, and I'm going to manually face the part. That's going to take 30 thousandths off the face of the part. Okay, this will set the Z master face that all the other tools are going to reference to. Again, do not take 30 thousandths off the other tools because we're doing it with this one. Okay, so 
back it off only in Z just to get it off the face. And I'm gonna set Z right there. So I'm gonna go over here to the control. Now, the Haas will automatically index the cursor to what turn it, what curve position is indexed to. The back will not do this. You have to make note to make sure you bring the cursor up. Okay? So, I'm gonna type in M for major, and you can turn the spindle off now if you wanted to. M for major. Z for the axes that I'm measuring. And then zero, because I'm telling the machine how far I'm away from zero. I just established the D0 base everything references to. Okay? So if for some reason I was doing a, a second off on a part, or I was trying to establish an overall length, I might face a part and find that I'm 10,000 to one part. So I got 10,000 to go. I would tell it NZ.01. Look for minus. I'm always telling it on the fan of control how far I am away from the Kind of one of the differences right there. I'm at zero, so I can just go MC zero. And then I press the input key. And what the control is going to do, it's going to reference OK. I was at home. You move me up to here. Put that number right there. Put it So Z is set for that tool. We're now going to turn our spindle back on. And we're going to cut the diameter of the bar. So I'm going to come in and Z a little bit, flip it over to X, come down in X. <coughs> Go just until I cut it up the bar I can wipe. A little more of it there. When I back it off, I make sure I back it off only in Z. This is extremely important. Because again, it's taking input from machine zero to where it's at. Now I'm going to go ahead and mic part. Keep the mic right. Take the The nice thing about it is when you when you give this MX and MZ, it actually zaps out your work. Yeah. Except it won't do 21, 22, 23 because we made the input. So yeah, we'll protect those. That's 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 a good point. All right, so we're going to mic part, and let's see what we get this time. All right, so now, let's see, I got 900, 925, 950, 975, 985, 986, 987. Okay, so now I'm going to go here to the control, I'm going to type in measure, the M key. X for the axis I want to measure, <coughs> and then the exact size that I measured for the mic. Input. And what it's going to do, it's going to take into effect. Now, you got to realize this machine, the center of a Boron bar socket, the theoretical value is where zero is. So that's what it's measuring from. So even though the number is awfully small, it's a number measuring from the center line of the Boron bar socket if it was installed. Price M for X. X for the axes, and then I plug in the diameter that I cut. Okay. And it puts in half the value? Nope. Nope. It has nothing to do with half the value. Oh, okay. What it puts in, excuse me, second, we need a bottom bar to put it on in here. Random axis. Zero was the center of this guy. If this was installed, the X0 position is running right to the middle of this. So it's measuring a distance of how far it is from this center line to that contact bolt. bolt up. That's what a lot of your, your fan up ways do. The hot slice in the So that tool is set. Now we're going to set the next tool. It's a finished tool, so I definitely want to cut it. So I'm going to feed up to it. Get on the right side of the center line. Turn the spindle on. It will stay on at the existing RPM. I do not want to take 30,000, so I'm going to go just barely until I touch the space to stop. Right 
right there. Yep. Right there is where I'm just barely touching the face of the stock. That is going to be Z0. So I'm going to go to the control, move the cursor down to tool 2. Major Z, 0. Input. Z is set for that tool now. Now we're going to set X for this tool. Come down in Z. I like to always set a finish tool. I want to touch it. Turn it. When I back it off, I do not touch X at all. I come back only in Z because it needs to be at the exact position that it made that cut. Okay? Now we're going to mic the part. And I'm getting about 975, 980, about 982. So I'm going to go here, make sure I'm offset 2, type in measure X, 0.982, input. And again, it's measuring a distance from the center of a bore mark socket. If it was installed, you tip the tool. Okay? So that's what's getting that number from on this machine. Now we're going to do the cutoff tool. Make sure you're careful with this turret. It moves only one speed fast. If you go too fast, you'll bypass your turret position. We're going to come around again. There we go. If you want to set up a shim stock, you can. Should I show you guys how to do that again? What do you want to do with a live spindle? Live spindle. Live spindle. I always prefer a live spindle myself because I can see it cut. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, go to Z, I'm going to go just until I see a chip, here we go, just barely see the chip there on that tool, okay so if I want I can stop it, I'm going to move this down to tool 9. I'm going to type in measure Z, zero point, input. And now we're going to set the X axis for this tool. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the spindle on. I'll back it off and Z a little bit first. Go X. Z. Come down an X until I just barely touch the bar. Now being this is a part off tool, if I want to go until I just barely touch the bar and use the existing number, that's fine. Right there. Right there is it. I barely touched it and then I backed it off one thousandths. So I'm going to go ahead and just go measure X.982. That's the number I previously used, right? So we'll use it again. It's going to be awkward enough for a cutoff tool. Input. Again, very important that I left the tool right exactly where it made that cut. Okay? Because that's the only thing the machine knows is where it's moved the motors to. That's it. That's the only input it's got. So if you move it off of the cut, you've now broken that correlation between the measurement of where the, where the motor is positioning your tool to cut the part. Okay? So we got three tools set. We're going to carefully back this away now. And now we're going to input the offsets in 21, 22, and 23. So we're going to go here. If we can leave it in handle mode still, uh, we're going to take note of our numbers. You can do a cell phone shot real quick if you want. You got one, two, and nine right there. But let's see, 407. So I'm going to go down to offset 21 and type in X of 0 .407, input. Z is minus 21054. I put it in just exactly as I found it. So minus 21.054, input. Z minus 21.054, there we go. Now I'm going to get number two. 
Number two is 1.633. So I'm going to go X 1.633 input. Z is minus 21.052. So I'm going to go Z minus 21.052. Okay. Tool 9 is 341 and X. X is 341. Let's see. Minus 2667. Minus 20.667. Oops. Z minus point. Not point. Come on. Z minus 20.667. Okay. Again, I always assume I put the numbers in wrong. Always. Okay, because you get one of these wrong, this is a big crash. All right, so we're going to go back and double check this. 407. 407. Minus 21054. Minus 21054. 1633. 1633. 21052 in the minus direction. 21052 in the minus direction. Tool 9, 341. Tool 23, 341. Tool 9 and Z is minus 2667. 23 is minus 2667. Okay? So right now the offset is set up to make the first checker and then you'll make a vertical checker. It doesn't shift yet. Okay? This machine has a little bit thicker part off blade so our incremental shift towards the chuck is 635 okay so now we're going to incrementally shift these geometry offset numbers 6.635 towards the chuck okay so i'm going to go to cursor position 21. now remember the first day of class i put up that axis chart remember that Get x y z IJK. And what else did I put up there? UVW. UVW. What was UVW? Secondary axis. What's that? Secondary axis. Secondary axis or what was the other alternative? You got stored on your Apple Watch? No, no, no. Uh, incremental axis. Incremental axis on FedEx and Haas Lace. So W is incremental for C. Guess what? I can go W minus 0.635, and I can incrementally shift any offset anywhere on a fan up machine. Or a Haas machine. Or a Yasnak machine. Input, watch what happens. Now you should have an idea in your mind what's gonna happen here. We're gonna be minus 21.6 something. And we are. See that? Now we're going to go down to offset 22. We're going to say W minus 0.635. Make sure I typed it right. And again, you should get a uh, you know 21.6 something. There we go. Let's go here. W minus 0.635. Input's going to take us to 21.2 something. 302, I guess 302. We're at 667 already. Okay. So now we've been completely shifted the second parts over. We're ready to roll. Now, all the technical air offsets. We should have checked them over there the first time, but we didn't. But now we've learned that lesson, so we won't make the same mistake twice, right? Let's go to where. Make sure there's no where. This shouldn't be for 1, 2, and 9 because that NX process automatically. Out. We should still check them anyway. But the ones we input manually did not get automatically cleared out. And matter of fact, there's an offset on 22. Let's get that out of there. Go X zero point input. Now we got a clean slate. Okay. Um, when you also when you guys do offsets, if you're using G41, G42 tool cutter compensation and you're going to see programs on the lathe, you've got to make sure the radius gets entered and the tip value gets entered. We're not using this program, so it doesn't matter. But 
with your word, that's another value you got to put in on this, on this setting. Okay, so now we're going to run it. So I'm going to edit, program, make sure we get the right program in there. Up, this is checkers off one, two for var. Uh, when you guys run on this machine, I'm always going to say put the check page on. It will tell you the distance to go. We'll go ahead and put optional stop on. Optional stop was handy last time around, wasn't it? What did that do? It allowed me to see that the rough tool was strapped to my part. Okay, so this is very important on a setup to always check what the rough tool is leaving for the finish. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. I've seen the case many times where people um, think the rough, the finish tool is strapped to part, and they go to offset it, and it didn't. It never touched it. Because the rough tool undercut it. All right, so now. Minus eight, seven, nine to go. I want to peek in there just to make sure it looks about right. Yeah, it looks about right. So now we look pretty good there. We're gonna face the bar. So there's our rough cuts. Okay. So now this is where it's handy. I'll put the caliber and see if the rough tool did. See if we're on target. About 760, that's about perfect. Okay. All right, we'll close our door. Now our finish tool is setting. Always be ready to stop this guy, okay? You guys are doing the physical setup of the machine now, so we really want to be on our toes and stop the machine if we need to. You could even mic your part. And if your part was oversized, you can even offset it and reset it and rerun it and not strap the part. We're coming out about seven, yeah, 49 and change. So we probably will offset it, but it's still a good part. So I'll go ahead and let it finish this part. Now the process of making an offset and then recutting it, that's pretty common because let's say we're, we're doing a prototype run and we're doing a really expensive car. We're cutting the thick pieces of titanium or something like that. Okay? Well, you only make it two or three parts. Now usually when you do a job like that, usually what I would always do, I would always cut a piece of aluminum in front of it and I would always run that so I can measure techniques. But still, it, it always reacts differently on the actual material. So many times when I had it work like that in my shop and I was doing a prototype, I would purposely set the machine up and give it plus offsets of like 20 thousandths. I'd cut the part and I'd measure it and mic it and then I'd offset it so when I came back and did the cut the next time it would bring up the size. Okay? So that's a way you can kind of control it. Um, sometimes it's kind of a little difficult doing that because tool always reacts differently when it's taking a heavy cut versus a lighter cut, but all right, so here's our part. Overall length is good. 460. Our diameter's off a little bit. I'm about to show you guys how to make a huge mistake. <laughs> I measured it and it was good, so I need to pull the bar out and make more parts, right? Was that? The second bar. Second bar. Ooh, look what happens if I pull that sock out. You're in for a big surprise on the next cut. Big, nasty, noisy, loud. Bar. It's going to make a part there now, so don't pull it out. It's a machine. It's dumb. It doesn't have, if I pull that bar out, it doesn't know. It's just going to say, okay, I can cut that and try to cut it. Okay, all right. There. There's the bar. I'm gonna just let it run through. I will be a little careful as I come up to it. I hit the feed hole. I got a quarter inch to go. It looks good. Now I got off. I'll stop off. I'm gonna let it run. I'm gonna let it cut off. Right. 
somewhere in that soup is the second part. Maybe. Aha, there it is. I thought the machine ate it for a second. I'm dead. Yeah. So now we know this is our first part, that's our second part. If I was going to do wear offsets, I would make sure I obviously had the part separated. This part is coming out. This and let's see, about 749. So I probably would want to give this like a 1,000th wear offset. Okay, you guys are gonna reset it up again anyway. So but if I was gonna make a good part, I'd say okay. Checker one needs a 1,000th wear offset to make it good. Checker two. Also needs about a 1,000th wear offset. Okay. 1,000. I'm right at 749, the high side of the tolerance. So if I want to make good parts, I would have to go to the offset table and I'd have to make two offsets. I'd go to the wear table, tool 2x minus 0 0.001, and then tool 22, x minus 0 0.001. Now when I ran my parts, it should come out good now. Stop. 